Welcome back to another edition of CCS and Sons Workshop. In this episode, I'm going to show you how we changed a relatively boring wall into this 3D geometric design. We're really pleased with how it turned out, so if you want to see how we did it, stick around and enjoy. The first step of the project was to remove the existing baseboard on this one wall. Because we were using MDF boards and we wanted them all to sit flush together, we needed to put a new baseboard on the bottom that didn't have the decorative angles on the top. All you really need to do is get a pry bar in between the baseboard and the wall and gently pry it off. It does help to slice the old caulking before you try to remove it. It makes it come off a bit cleaner. If you don't already have one, you can pick up one of these oscillating cutters from Harbor Freight for about 20 bucks. Well worth it. In our case, I needed it to trim just a bit off of the existing baseboards that we were keeping in order to slide the new baseboard totally flush against the wall end to end. project involves a lot of miter cuts so either have a miter saw at home or be really comfortable with using one of those hand box miter contraptions either way you're gonna have to make a lot of cuts in our project we used MDF for all of the three-dimensional geometric designs we used one by four MDF which is actually you know about a half inch by three and a half inch One little tip that helps with cutting these uh, long boards is if you just cut them a hair long, you can sort of spring them into place uh, and then they won't fall out. This is especially works well on the long vertical boards. If they're just a touch too long, they'll spring into place and they won't be able to fall out. going to need a brad nailer of some kind so whether it's pneumatic or one of those battery powered hand nailers uh, get used to using it there's a lot of brad nails make sure you mark all the studs on your wall top to bottom so that you can find them on all the trim pieces that you put up gauge two inch brad nails I figured that would reach all the way through the trim through the drywall and into the studs we also added glue to the backs of all of the trim pieces that were making up our geometric wall the way we wanted this design required the wall to essentially be trimmed out on the top and sides so that's what we did first was add side and very top boards to build a trimmed out panel that we then built the angled pieces inside of. And once you start getting your boards in place, start getting to work with the brad nailer. see what I mean about the springing action right here this was just a hair long squeeze it in at the top and spring it in and it will not fall out for the longest span boards either across the top or diagonal you're definitely going to want some help getting it up I recommend brad nailing one end moving to the middle brad nailing it up supporting the middle and then move to the other end and then hit all the spots in between that you missed. If 
Because I barely passed high school geometry, I found it easiest to mark the left and bottom of the wall with where we wanted our first angle boards to fall. We then held the MDF board up and marked where the miter cuts needed to be. Make sure that you wipe up any of the glue squeeze out on the edges of the trim boards, otherwise you will see that through the paint. Carpenter's square comes in real handy for establishing these first angles and then after that you can use a cut spacer for the subsequent board placement. You can see right here how I'm holding up a board that's just a bit too long on purpose and marking where I need the angle to be and then I can make the perfect cut on the miter saw. For the horizontal boards, we did use a laser level. You could also accomplish this with a hand level, uh, but if you have a laser level, it makes it a bit easier. As I mentioned, this project is going to involve many trips in and out to your miter saw. One of the tips that I recommend is actually drawing on your board the angle, even if it's just freehand and off, but the approximate angle of what your miter cut should look like, so that when you get out there, you can turn your saw to adjust to the right side and you don't waste board. Once you have all your boards up, it's time to start filling the gaps between them all so that you have a nice seamless finish when it's done. I used a DAP plastic wood. I'll put links in the description of all the products that I used, but this worked out well for us. It goes on pink and then dries a natural color so you know when it's fully dried. When you're doing this, it is helpful to not scrape away everything from the joint that you're trying to fill. Leave a bit extra on top, and then when you come back and sand it, it helps you get a really nice, perfectly flush finish. 
If you have any brad nails that didn't quite make it below the surface of the wood, now's the time to go around with a little punch and make sure those are all well recessed below the face of the trim board. And then once you have all the nail holes filled and all the gaps between the boards filled, it's time to start sanding. I used a sponge block sander for most of it. That worked well for the nail holes and the gaps between the boards. And then I did use my random orbital sander for some of the uh, more stubborn areas that required a bit extra elbow grease. to add the caulking between all the trim boards in the wall. One important tip on adding caulking is to cut as small of a tip off as possible. You really don't need that big of a bead so start with a tiny little slice and if you need more you can always cut more. You're just gonna end up wasting a lot of product if you cut a nice big chunk off of the tip. So lay down a nice bead between the joints of all your trim boards and the wall. And then I like to use one of these tools that have a real tight radius uh, round over to spread and remove any excess caulking. You can use your finger, some people do that. I just think it makes a giant mess and this looks a lot cleaner. So you can pick these up for just a couple bucks and they're worth it. need to remove anything from the wall or the baseboards a damp rag cleans this stuff up real well before it dries I actually ended up sanding off the pre-primed finish of the MDF. So I used this oil-based uh, primer to cover those spots where the raw MDF was exposed. I don't know if this is 100% necessary, but in theory, a water-based paint could soak into that raw MDF and swell it up. So I used this oil-based primer to first cover those areas up before I put on the water-based primer and water-based paint. And then we did prime the entire wall with this Zinzer 123 primer product. It just saves you time and paint of your, your final paint choice. You might notice I'm using a couple different rollers here. For the wall, which we have a textured drywall on, I used a relatively thick nap roller to hold a lot of paint and get in all the crevices. For the MDF boards, I recommend using a foam roller that applies a much more smooth paint application on those already smooth boards. And then of course a brush for all the corners and crevices. And then starts the most tedious part of the project, painting several coats of primer and two coats of the final color. So get ready to enjoy painting. For our 
final color we went with a Benjamin Moore product the Regal Select line of their paint in your chosen color and sheen it is a bit more on the expensive side at about $50 a gallon but I have found it generally that the higher quality paints are worth the cost with the ease of application and their coverage if you've enjoyed watching this video and learned something along the way, hit that like button down below if you don't mind. It really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing. When all said and done, we really love how this turned out. It exceeded our expectations, changes the whole look of the room, and we're thrilled. Thanks for watching CCS and Sons Workshop. Hope to see you in the next episode.